Welcome to repairing a south with 12 inch steam pump. This is part one, initial inspection to find out what the problem is. The postman delivered this package to me yesterday morning. Following a recent communication from the owner, I knew what was in the package, a 12 inch south with steam pump. This pump has been taken out of a full size steamboat. The question is though, why? And the second question is, why is it in pieces? The arrangement that I normally have with customers when they need me to repair something is they send me the item, then I can evaluate what the problem is and then give them an estimate for the repairs. And from experience I never rush into this, I never go, oh yeah this will be, I can do this and I can do that, because it usually goes badly wrong if I do it that way. A quick glance at the engine tells me immediately what the problem is, and the reason for having been dismantled in the first place. But I really am not going to rush into things. There could be a lot of things wrong with this pump that I'm not even aware of. If you want more details about steam pumps and their problems, please watch my series, The Trouble with Steam Pumps. Very often, working on a steam pump opens a can of worms, and the job can then take far longer than you would expect. Looking at the colour of the top of the water valve chest is an indication. Somewhere there is a constant water leak that's been dripping on this. This could just be a leak from the two nut and bolt assemblies, which are the valve travel limiters, but I think it's probably more likely to be coming from the gland in the water chest. When used in a model steam engine application, these pumps pump up to maybe £100 per square inch, but in a full-size steamboat, the pressure could be a lot higher. If the gland at the top of the water cylinder wasn't sealing properly, then you would get water squirting all over the place when it was pumping against a high pressure. The inlet and outlet is a bit of a weird and wonderful arrangement. I had to think about this to figure out what it was. Is it so you can control the speed using the outlet? Maybe, maybe not. The steam is admitted to the steam chest which isn't fitted at the moment. So this fitting on the right hand side is currently a bit of a puzzle to me. If I get the job of repairing the engine I will look into it in greater detail. One thing that worries me about this engine, as would worry me about any steam engine, is the sheer volume of silicone rubber that's been used to seal the parts. Using silicone rubber is quick and convenient, but I much prefer making proper gaskets. It's not the bead of silicone rubber on the outside of the parts that worries me, it's what's inside. Before I can examine this engine in any kind of detail, I need to remove it from the bracket that it's mounted to. Also mounted on the bracket is the oil pump, and I would hazard a guess that the large piece of hexagon brass on the pipe is a one-way valve. What I'm going to do is fix the engine temporarily to a scrap piece of plywood. I had to fit the screws at a slight angle, bad workmanship I know, but it's only a very temporary situation. I mounted the pump on the piece of scrap plywood in such a way that the water chest overlapped it. Originally the plan was to push a short piece of hose pipe onto the water inlet, but that wasn't successful, I couldn't get it to seal. Moving now from the bottom of the engine to the top, I'm just having a test fit of the steam chest and the steam chest cover, just to make sure I know which way up it is. I think this engine has been in this state for a long time. Taken out of service, dismantled, and unfortunately some of the parts have got lost, namely the two valves that should be sat in here. The one on the right is operated by the valve spindle, and the one on the left is actually the shuttle piston, which also operates a slide valve. The good news is, even though it's not very oily, the shuttle piston still works, it's not rusted into the cylinder. And by cylinder I mean the shuttle piston cylinder, which is very small and built into the valve chest. There are one or two puzzling things that bother me with this pump. All of the holes in the steam chest and the steam chest cover are drilled, but only four of them are drilled the right size to allow the fitting of a 4BA stud through into the cylinder block. And if you look here at the cylinder block, you can see that the holes on each corner are threaded and the right size for 4BA. Back down to the bottom of the engine, this was my idea of using a hose pipe on the fitting, but it wasn't sealing very well, so I have a better idea. 
I'm going to screw a length of thick wall rubber tubing in place of the 90 degree elbow. The only problem is this is the largest piece of silicone rubber tubing I have and the outside diameter is too small for the inside diameter of the hole in the water chest. So I pushed a piece of quarter inch copper tube into the end of it. This expanded the tube and it's still too small. So to expand the silicone rubber tubing further I used a piece of 5 16 of an inch diameter copper tube. This worked and made it so the external diameter of the silicone rubber tubing is now able to be screwed into the thread in the water chest. I placed the other end of the piece of silicone rubber tubing into a water bottle. And I'm moving the piston manually to see whether the pump primes. And unfortunately it doesn't, or if it is doing, I don't know how far the water's got down the tube. To speed up the job, I used a large plastic syringe, and this allowed me to prime the water chest, so it should work now. And indeed it does, but not properly. This will definitely need further investigation. These pumps are double acting, but this one only pumps on the downstroke. In the next episode I will investigate what the problem is in the water chest. As to the missing valves, I just need to make a pair of them. I'll get in touch with Blackgate's engineering to see if they do them as castings. Although I suppose I could just make them out of some cast gunmetal stick. That's it for this initial episode. So far I cannot give an estimate on how much it's going to cost to repair it because I don't know the full extent of the problem yet. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.